guess what? Your hair might be able to time travel. Now let me explain. It's not going to use a time machine and go back to the 1800s to speak with your great-grandparents. Hmm. But do you know that moment when you spot a strand of gray hair and think, ooh, I'm getting older? Well, scientists have some exciting news. They might have found a way to turn things around and bring some color back into your luscious locks, at least for a while. A study from the 70s talked about a man who had three hair strands that were lighter at the tips but darker near the scalp. This might mean that the typical process of hair turning gray, which starts at the roots, might have done a U-turn. Now, a new piece of research has found even stronger evidence that this can happen. Specialists looked at hair from a bunch of people of different ages and backgrounds. What they discovered might sound a bit surprising. It seems that our graying might be linked to our stress levels. How we feel inside might be showing up on our heads. This new approach suggests that there could be a time frame during which our hair turning gray might be more switchable than we once believed. Some years back, an expert from Columbia University was wondering about the whole aging process. He thought that, just like some parts of our body age before others, the hair on our heads doesn't go all gray at once. Maybe the hairs that turn white first are like the weak links in the chain. While chatting with his partner, he had this eureka moment. If they could find a hair that's half gray and figure out how quickly it was growing, they might find out when it started to lose color. Luckily, his partner found such hair on her head, and their project began. They soon found around 14 people, from youngsters to grandparents, with such two-toned strands of hair. They even developed a method to see the tiny color changes in these hair strands. And the results were astounding. Some grays turned back to their original colors, and not just on the head, but all over the body. Now, most of us notice gray hair creeping in during our 30s. These scientists believe that's the best time to hope for a reversal. And even if your head's full of grays, some of those might still be open to change. You see, even other types of experts find this study promising. They believe it might show how age-related changes in our bodies might be flipped around. Sure, we're only looking at hair for now, but who knows? One day, perhaps, we'll be able to reverse signs of aging in our skin or muscles, too. There's more to this research than just hair color. These scientists wanted to see if stress could play a role in hair graying. Everyone's heard stories about people's hair turning white overnight when facing stressful events. The researchers asked participants to share their most stressful moments over a period of a year. Oh By matching these events to when hair color changed, they found that big stress or relaxation moments aligned with hair color shifts. Like one guy's hair started to revert during his relaxing vacation, yeah. and another woman had a patch of gray that matched a super challenging period in her life. Oh God. Sure, while scientists admire the research, they still feel the need to remind us that this project is still in the early days. More work needs to be done, so we can totally rely on these findings. So, what's next? The researchers are now diving deeper into the link between stress and gray hair. They're hoping to track people over time to see how their hair and stress levels change. In the future, some say our hair could be a window into our past experiences. Just like trees have rings that show their age, our hair might hold secrets about our life events. Well, stress or no stress, what's the process behind hair turning gray? First off, let's tackle a common myth. It turns out that hair doesn't really switch to gray. It switches to not having any color at all. Once your hair sprouts with a certain color, be it brown, black, blonde, or even fiery red, it sticks to that shade for life. Well, unless you decide to give it a colorful makeover with some dye. As we grow older, our hair gets a little forgetful and produces less color. So after celebrating a certain number of birthdays, when old hairs fall out and new ones pop up, there's a higher chance of them being gray. If you're wondering when you'll see your first gray hair, browse through your family albums. Your genes, passed down from your ancestors, usually decide when it's time. Also, why do we have more hair on our heads compared to the rest of our bodies anyway? We first must figure out why most animals have fur. It turns out that animals wear their coats because it keeps them snug when the temperatures drop, and it shields them from the harsh sun. 
In that case, why did our ancestors decide to let go of most of their fur? Because they got creative. They figured out new ways to stay warm and protected using fire, building shelters, and dressing up. However, just because they could survive without a fur coat doesn't mean they just magically lost all their hair. There must have been a good reason to go hairless. There are many theories on this subject, too. One suggests that it might have gotten too hot for us at some point. Another one indicates some of our ancestors might have spent a considerable amount of time in the water. Having that much hair over their bodies could have weighed them down. Obviously, scientists have yet to pinpoint the exact reason. What about the hair on our heads? Why is it still here? The explanation is quite simple. Humans evolved to walk on our two feet. This means our heads became like these sunflower tops, always facing up. And we know how the sun can be super intense, especially in some regions of our planet. So our head hair acts like a built-in cap. There's more to the subject. Our heads, though not that big compared with the rest of our bodies, are busy. Since they're always active, they create warmth. Our head hair keeps that warmth from escaping, like a natural built-in beanie. Gray or not, our strands of hair might become more useful in the future. Every time you get a haircut, ever wonder where all that hair goes? For now, it's thrown away. Thankfully, some ingenious minds from Queensland had an amazing idea. Instead of just seeing leftover hair as trash, they saw potential energy. They gently burned the hair and extracted carbon, turning it into these teeny tiny dots. Think highfalutin pixie dust. Now here's where the magic happens. They sprinkled these nanodots onto solar panels. What this did is it made the solar panels work better and they were more stable. Your hair also has this pigment called melanin. I'll spare you the complicated details, but this chemical is sensitive to light. A Nepali teenager found out about this and thought, why not use hair instead of expensive silicon in solar panels? Imagine replacing pricey silicon with affordable hair, giving loads of people a chance to use cheaper energy. This might just be the next important thing in making solar energy more accessible and affordable. Next up, imagine this. You're munching on your delicious lunch salad. Ever thought hair could help grow that? Thanks to scientists at the university in Singapore, this might soon become a reality. They've developed a way to grow crops, especially in cities, using a method called hydroponics. No soil required. Instead, they use a special mix made from hair. Let's break down the process. The researchers collected hair from places like hair salons, and from this hair, they extracted something called keratin. They mixed this keratin with cellulose fibers, making it stronger. When dried, it turned into a squishy base that's perfect for growing things. They chose to experiment with microgreens and even delicious veggies like bok choy and arugula. Mm. Okay, that's enough. I'm heading for the salad bar. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.